Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in Birmingham within one hour. The main story of today's episode is about a gang from Birmingham and Coventry that robbed a quarter of a million pounds worth of cash machines. But before that, I'll tell you about some other stories that are going on, some other things that are going on. On Sunday in Lazales in Birmingham, a 17-year-old was shot. Police swarmed to Birmingham Street after reports of a shooting of a teenage boy in Archibald Road. They put it on lockdown in the early hours of Sunday morning and a 17-year-old turned up to hospital a bit later on with injuries, uh, gunshot injuries. The scene involved a Mercedes car. A 26-year-old man and two 17-year-olds have been arrested on suspicion of violent disorder and possession of an offensive weapon. A police spokesman said at this stage it is, it's not known what the injuries the boy sustained are or how he got them but it is believed that he was shot. I hope this young lad recovers quickly and I'll give you an update on any information that does come out about that. And in other news, the story of Shane O'Brien. He was one of Britain's most wanted men. He had ran away for three and a half years after killing Josh Hansen in West London. The Old Bailey sentenced him on the 23rd of October and he's been sentenced to a minimum of 26 years in prison. The judge said his actions were grotesque, violent and totally unnecessary. An attack on an innocent man. He rejected the suggestion that O'Brien had been provoked vote and acted in self-defence. A jury took 55 minutes on the 1st of October to convict him. He's originally from Ladbroke Grove and Josh was from Kingsbury. He died after he was slashed in the throat. I did a very in-depth reaction to this murder, the whole case. So if you want to know the whole story, please go and look up the video of Shane O'Brien and Josh Hansen, Scar City. And I really appreciate all the support and the views on that video. Rest in peace to Josh Hansen and my condolences to his family. In the main story of today this gang has been jailed over a quarter of a million pounds worth of cash machine raids they actually robbed queen elizabeth hospital this is the biggest hospital in birmingham if not the west midlands it is massive it's had millions of pounds pumped into it and i have no idea how they managed to just walk out of there with cash machines they actually robbed three hospital cash machines so as you can imagine with banks becoming so hard to take money from now with all the security measures cash machines are the next best thing. Reading from West Midlands Police, an organised crime gang that stole a quarter of a million pounds worth in a series of attacks on cash machines is behind bars today. New footage shows the raids around the region. The gang tied straps around three standing ATM before ripping them out using vehicles and clone plates. They targeted hospitals, train stations, shops and cafes and carried out detailed reconnaissance on the targets. So they spent quite a bit of time, as it was caught on camera later on, which was their downfall, actually checking them out, seeing if it was a good job to do. The targets of the gang's 11 burglaries and attempted burglaries. On the 15th of March 2018, the gang used cutting equipment to break into a spa shop in Tamworth before ripping out the cash machine. On the 24th of September 2018, the gang cut bollards to get into Birmingham's Cannon Hill Park, where they dragged a cash machine from the Midlands Arts Centre. That's the centre. A lot of people perform there. They do a lot of theatre there. On the 29th of September 2018, the inside of a post office in Litchfield was destroyed when the gang took the cash machine and tore through it. The gang put tape over the CCTV cameras to avoid detection. On the 17th of October 2018, the gang walked into Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital before loading an ATM onto a trolley and walking out past members of the public. It would have been impossible, obviously, to hospital the open 24 hours a day and it's the busiest hospital in the city of course there's going to be people there at all times but to be fair i thought there was more security than that i didn't expect it to be able to be so easily done and the 27th of january 2018 security guards had to dodge out of the way of the gang as they disturbed a cash and carry robbery in birmingham a major police investigation was launched and the gang was tracked down using cctv forensics and phone analysis the police claimed 
claimed that the gang's downfall came when they were forced to abandon a transit van they were using as a getaway vehicle following a pursuit by police. Forensic tests on that van and fingerprints left on a trolley that was dumped at one of the crime scenes helped police to identify the ringleader Craig Matthews who had 19 previous convictions spanning 49 offences. He left DNA on a piece of tape used to cover a camera in Litchfield. He was also forensically linked to a registration plate on one of the vans. Police uncovered CCTV of him examining a cash machine while unsuspecting passengers went about their business in a rugby train station. The gang was arrested at the beginning of the year and went on to admit conspiracy to commit commercial burglary. Today they were sentenced to Birmingham Crown Court. Craig Matthews from Birmingham was jailed for eight years, seven months. David Bradley was jailed for five years. Kenneth Bourne from Nuneaton was jailed for six years. Shane, I can't pronounce that last name, got seven years and two months. Charlie Ward from Toyle Hill also in Coventry was handed five years also. And the reason some people might be like, why is that sentence so low? Commercial burglary it's a totally different kettle of fish you can get more for robbing a person's home while they're living in it than you would for robbing a business because it isn't seen as anybody getting necessarily injured even though it caused a lot of damage and would have been terrifying for some of them security guards i imagine even though no one was injured which is a very important thing in regard to the sentencing that's very important the gang left a trail of destruction and huge bills thanks to great police work we were able to share a detailed picture of the gang their vehicles reconnaissance and movements we're continuing to work with the cash machine industry to help introduce security to reduce the risk of them being targeted by criminals in the future and it happens all the time they will create some sort of security measure to slow it down and then criminals will find a way around it it's just how it works the industry has called for secure atms including sprays that identify thieves for up to five years after the attack mark terry the international managing director for or cash machines who owned some of the machines that were targeted said i hope these sentences are a warning to anyone out there contemplating robbing secure atms the results show that the atms are exceptionally effective in helping the police track down catch and send to jail those who attempt to uh, rob them so in reality it's just a case of like they said is the risk worth the reward as i said they're gonna just keep improving it so i really want to hear what people have to say on this so thank you for joining me for the scar city news and i'll be back again very soon so thank you peace